I'm standing on the north end of the Walport Bridge that goes over the Alsea River. So it's going to be a little noisy. I'll try not to talk when there's lots of traffic noise. The tide is out a bit, so you can see the exposed sandbar in the river inlet. Continue looking south and now a little bit more to the west. Here in front of us, you can see the, the shore pine and then the stiff, lighter colored needles of the Sitka spruce. And since we're along the edge of a freshwater river, we have some alder down here. We've got some salal, which you would expect to see, and then there looks like there's some uh, blackberries in here as well. So, the Alsea River is an undammed coastal range river that comes down into this widened out estuary and at a really, really low tide, most of this estuary is uncovered, meaning that it's sandbars. You can see in the distance, past those boats, this shelf of sand coming out. That is the end of the Waldport Spit. A spit is a deposition, elongated deposition of sand get, that gets deposited by basically a wave action across the opening of a river estuary. And the Walport Spit's not really all that long compared to some, but as you can see, it is covered in houses. Covered. The town of Walport itself is across the inlet. It's across the river from the spit. We have moved out temporarily of the area that has the basalt bedrock. As we go further north towards Cascade Head, we would get back into that rock that is that 35 to 40 million year old volcanic rock that we saw down at Hasita Head and that you'd see at Cape Perpetua. But right now, we are in the area where, if there is bedrock, it's sedimentary rock, part of the sedimentary rock that was uplifted, used to be marine sediment, buried, lithified, and then uplifted due to the tectonic regime we have had here, right, where we have a plate the Juan de Fico plate going underneath the North American plate. And it doesn't go down into that subduction zone very willingly. It's um, stuck, basically. <laughs> and what ends up happening is you get uh, the edge of the continent, that sediment that was being deposited on the edge of the continent eventually gets squeezed up and that is the, the most of the coast range, is that old sedimentary rock that has been moved upwards by tectonics. Now you'll see over there in Walport that there's the houses down right along the beach basically. And then there are some houses up above. There is a small, a uh, bluff, if you will. I won't call it a cliff because it's not that tall. And that bluff is made out of sedimentary rock layers that have been tilted, uplifted and tilted by tectonic processes. Okay, so it's a little bit more sturdy than just dune sand, which we also have here. This is right underneath the bridge. 
and this is across the road. So this bluff across the road uh, is probably, it gets up to about maybe 60, 80 feet above the actual water level in the inlet. And their houses built all along it. That stuff is semi-consolidated. I would not call it rock. That is old dune sand that is somewhat stuck together. It's a little bit compacted and has some oxides, but it really isn't rock. Whereas the layers that are those top houses are built on over there are a little bit older and they're a little bit more consolidated. They're not going to be as hard as basalt, but they're better than just dune sand that's barely stuck together. Alsi Bay is really popular with crab fishermen because of that shallow water sitting on top of that sand. Uh, there's lots and lots of crab pots that are put out in Alsi Bay during the right uh, time of year. That was a bird. And Alsi also has a relatively good um, uh, steelhead and salmon run because there's no dams so they can get up to their streams to spawn. So let's take another look at this spit. The highest spot on that spit, which is all sand, is probably around 35 feet. You know, where that top row of houses has been built, maybe. 35 feet off of sea level. If indeed we have a 9.0 earthquake plus on our coastline, which we're supposed to, in fact, we're kind of overdue, uh, according to um, the latest prognosticators of what the um, interval is between large earthquakes on our Cascadia subduction zone, that earthquake will generate a tsunami of considerable size. That tsunami will hit our coastline anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes after the earthquake occurs. All those houses on there, out there on that spit um, are in danger, shall we say. That tsunami will very likely go right over the top of that spit and the houses will be taken off their foundations they're just sitting on sand after all and that tsunami wave will carry quite a bit of that debris from those houses up the estuary all of those places on that low area over there and right along the beach here will also be inundated by a tsunami depending on how tall the tsunami wave is those buildings that are up on the next level up, and then of course the houses you can see over there, they might be far enough up above the beach that they will survive. Maybe. If the tsunami, what we call run up, is 50 feet, then those buildings up on that top level may not be tall enough. Run up is the elevation that the water attains its furthest distance inshore that it comes. Inundation distance is how far inshore the water comes. So run up is a vertical distance and inundation distance is a horizontal distance inland. So if you've got a low open area like the Alsea Inlet here, then that tsunami wave is gonna go up that inlet quite a ways. But how tall it gets, how high it gets up on these hills will depend on how big the wave is, what its run up is. But for sure, the houses on the spit are probably not high enough up to not be overrun by a tsunami wave. So this is called the uh, Alsea Bay North Wayside. 
uh, there's a KOA campground on this um, side of the highway and I encourage you to come and visit the wayside. You can, especially at low tide, many times the seals, the harbor seals, will pull out and lay on the sand uh, bars that are exposed here in the inlet. One last thing. Notice that over there on the water edge of this side of the um, spit, that there's dark rows of, you know, there's dark areas. Then there's a light area where there's a little beach, a little dark area again, and then there's the end of the spit. That dark is piles of basalt rocks that those homeowners have put. They don't have, really have a beach anymore. They have had to put those piles of basalt rock called riprap in front of their houses because the river itself runs this way. Now, the, where the greatest velocity of the river is, as it's going around a corner, is something that we call a foul wig. I think it's a, a Norwegian term, but at least it sounds like it. And that's where the erosive uh, velocity, the, where the greatest velocity is, is where erosion takes place. So all those houses had to put up those rock barriers so that the river itself would not remove the spit on the inside of the spit. The Alsi Bay Spit has actually been growing towards the south and also been adding sand on the seaward side for a while now. But that's just now, because there have been times when the Alsi Spit has actually eroded back quite a bit. If you have a lot of really vigorous wave activity in the winter, that'll happen. For right now, it's growing. But in the future, some of those houses at the very end down there might be in danger.